Many of the best Raspberry Pi projects use sensors to collect data, and that's what I want to do in this video, to write a program to collect data from a sensor, save it into a file that I could use to analyze later on. So the first thing I did was to connect the sensor to the Raspberry Pi. I used the GPIO pin 17 to connect the sensor digital output, and I connect, also connected the sensor to the five volt and the ground. From the LED lights that were on, I could tell that the sensor was working, and that when I moved something nearby, like my hand, the sensor detected it. So the second thing then was to make sure that the sensor was working from the command line. Before I got into programming, I wanted to make sure that my Raspberry Pi could read in from the sensor using the simplest methods possible. I took a look online how to do this and it seemed there were two competing options. There was an old interface that uses the system files or a new interface that uses a character device. Despite all the websites talking about the old interface, Linux recommends using the new one. So that's what I was going to do. And to get this working on the command line, I had to download libgpiod2. Now that's very important. I started downloading libgpiod1 and compiling it and it didn't work. So make sure that you use number two if you're following along with this. Using some of the tools that came in this library, I was able to confirm that my Raspberry Pi was able to read from the sensor. And as you can see, when I put my hand nearby, a zero came out on the command line. So step three then, once everything's working is that we can start writing our program. And the first step here is to make sure that we've got all the right libraries installed and that's the RPI GPIO library for Python. And to do that, we can use pip. So I open up the command line and type in pip install rpi.gpio and it should confirm for you that it's already installed with Raspberry Pi OS. If you're using a different operating system, then this step will help install that uh, GPIO library. I started with some code to make sure that I could read an input from GPIO 17 and then print that to the prompt to show that my Python program was able to read in data. Because I knew that it was GPIO 17, I made sure to use the Broadcom chip uh, pin numbering rather than the Raspberry Pi one. A downside to this is that my script may not work on another Raspberry Pi, but since I'm just doing this for my own data collection purposes, I don't mind. Once I was able to read in from the sensor, I needed to put it into a loop so that my Raspberry Pi could always be checking to see if there was something there. However, if I looped through this infinitely, it was going to consume a lot of resources on the Pi. One thing I learned from my Arduino programming days was to put in a wait, a millisecond wait between loop. But then what happens if something uh, entered the proximity during that time? Would it, how would it detect? And also it didn't seem right for the Raspberry Pi to be waiting a set amount of time because timing depends on the operating system on a Raspberry Pi rather than just directly, it can be a bit harder to predict how long things are gonna be waiting for. So instead I looked up the best practices in how to do this and it was recommended to use the function wait for edge. This would stop the Raspberry Pi script running until there was a change in the input on that pin. So from wait for edge means when it goes from zero to one or one to zero, they're the edge. In our case, we also could have done wait for falling because the default status is one and then when something gets close to the Raspberry Pi sensor, it goes to zero. So now that we had a working loop that prints out a zero every time something comes close to the proximity sensor, the next step was to then save it to a file. So I added code inside the loop to open a file, append a reading and then close the file again. I chose to do it inside the loop so that we're not keeping the file open for the whole running of the script. A proximity sensor shouldn't be activated too often, which means that it's not so bad to be opening a file, writing, and then closing it again. If your sensor is going to be adding data every second, it's probably more efficient to keep the file open outside of the loop, then run the code, and then close the file at the end. I also wanted to add a timestamp so that I knew what time something approached the proximity sensor. In the example on screen, I forgot to convert it to a string, so make sure that you convert your timestamp and your readings to string so that Python can then save those to the file. Then after all this was done, I had a CSV file that I could save on the Raspberry Pi that I could analyze in another program or that I could send to another computer for further analysis. If you're interested in how files can be transferred from a Raspberry Pi to another computer, stay tuned because I'm making a video on that shortly. 